Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. I don't see nothing wrong with a little. Oh, yeah, he ain't see nothing wrong with that either. Good <laughs> though, he's nasty. Yeah, he is. I, I don't. Nasty but... back. Not that kind of nasty you want. Not hanging with me. I didn't witness that. Nah, I wasn't barbecue sauce last time. <laughs> nah, I'm talking nah, about nah. pissing on kids now. Oh, no. Nah. 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 I've never been like, that. We never had no episodes of that. I don't remember that. No, I've never been. I'm not a pedophile. Oh. Nah. nah. I don't urinate on people. Of any no, age. No. I'm not going to piss on you. No, I won't. Choo, choo, choo. Never choo, do. Choo, choo. Chip, 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 you. I missed the Chappelle show, but I heard he got like four specials in the work. Netflix. Yeah, that's coming. Yeah, I've seen that coming. Oh, yeah, dude. Do we go? You know, he cranked them hoes out. So we might get two. We might get two on one drop. I think he got some type of series too coming. Like that's part of the deal, or whatever. Like a um, um, like he's introducing new comics and stuff like that. I heard something I'll like take that. Okay. But whatever you want to uh, come with, Chappelle. You, you got a yeah. green light for me as far as comedy goes. Like, whatever you see fit to do, with, a, with go ahead. I trust it. Yeah. I and the man can just, that man can sit in one spot and not say jokes and still get laughs. So. Stand in one spot, mm. smoking a cigarette. Try to house that. This nigga can have a whole comedy special and not tell one joke. Yeah, he did. <laughs> this is social commentary, man. That's different. When you can do that, that's different. Mm-hmm. A different level. Yeah, you're a different type of artist at that point. Absolutely. Yeah, they got to bring out the bongos and snap fingers and stuff like that. Like it's a spoken yeah. word or something. Nigga had you oh, captivated man. talking about nothing. And he talked about a cardboard box and, and had a whole crowd just eating out the palm of his hand. Oscar, you're a grouch. Bitch, I live in the fucking trash can. <laughs> hey, baby. Right. Baby. I'm, I'm the college, motherfucker. Motherfucker, I got kids to feed. Fuck you niggas for the week. That is... <gasps> you saw him, Johnson. Sprinkle some crack on this. You saw him. You saw him. You saw him. After the, after that 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 one special right there that, that was that special it. right there put him on the map to me because before that, that like it. he was like the thing that everybody underground like like we liked him on like uh half baked and stuff like that mm-hmm. and, and he like we liked his mm-hmm. cameos and movies blue blue street shit but Def James the shit. average person wasn't like hype off a of Dave Chappelle yet. But that that was yeah. special, like that woke everybody. I remember the next day after that special, my our entire high school was like walking around quoting his shit. Quote like it like day. it was an it was an immediate one of them like, oh yeah, this is one of them that's gonna last forever. Like this is one of them classics right here. Cause every every kid was in there like every crowd was just have saying something from that special. Like mm-hmm. when you got one of them like that, yeah, you 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 out of here. Yeah, hey, baby. Baby. Oh, hey, baby. Hey, baby. Yeah, man. And he was... He's, he's the smartest comedian I've seen. Up in the club, baby. Like, like, he's a damn genius, yo. Like, he's literally the smartest when, when it comes to, like, understanding people and mm-hmm. understanding how to, like, evoke emotion in different ways. Like, he's a genius. And timing. Oh, he's excellent at timing. Oh yeah. When you can tell me, I'm going to make this into a joke by the end of this. <laughs> Go the whole thing, talking about everything else, and then come back to that and make that all make sense. Like nothing was out of line. It all it was a through line the whole time. There was like the <laughs> subtext with the 
the regular context, then you had the pretext. Like it, it was like a beautifully woven quilt of just comedy and storytelling and like the ability to manipulate words to just do what you want with them. Like that dude's mm-hmm. a fucking master, man. It's, it's scary how good he is. Like he's a little put you on a ride. Yeah, bro. He's different, you on man. That's a different type of comedian, man. Like when, when like I don't even know if you can call it comedian. He just he like a griot. He he got that Dick yeah. Gregory effect, like his ability mm-hmm. to st- st- speak truth to power and not like he's like our our Dick Gregory. Like he don't care what he say as long mm-hmm. as he feel like he's standing on with, with his truth. And and I rock with that. I rock with that hard. You know what I mean? So yeah. Integrity. Integrity, integrity farms, you know, uh, like on South Park, you know, smoking that integrity. You got your integrity. Did y'all see them episodes of South Park? I did. See it. I it was like Stan's dad was selling. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah whole, I remember that. Whole, yeah, whole, whole operation with a uh, towelie and all that. Yeah, that shit was hilarious. <laughs> Good time, but no. Um, but uh, while we feeling jovial and whatnot. What's up, guys? Welcome to the partners. Show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, and having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your boy Tiz, and I'm along with Salutations. It's the other third of the partners. It's the Padawan here, and I'm along with Pause. What's well, happening, man? It's Faith. I'm here in this place. I was running some type of race, but it's late. So hey, yeah, I mean, we are, uh, we are late night on late up, night. Man? So uh, excuse us if we get loopy. Um, for those of y'all that, that have been following us since the beginning, you know, after eleven o'clock, uh, we really it can't goes. promise where where this conversation is going to end up. Um, we it's have structure everywhere. to it. I promise you, we have topics and we we have it planned out. But how how the conversation goes, you might get a moment. Uh where it gets goofy. You might get a moment where Pat, you know, has to tell somebody he don't give a damn to that, that he don't give a damn. Like, it, it, it can go anywhere at this moment. Like, so strap in. Indeed. Get ready for another episode. We on episode 66. Episode 66. Man. Route 66. Hey, guys. Like, that's... Get your, get your kicks on Route 66. That is officially a year and four months, dude. Every week we've done it, like that. That's you. So, you know, what I mean, clap it up for that. that like, like that. that, that that's Thank you. Good. That's Thank pretty good. you. Like, like, yeah, we 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 doing something with that. Um, so we got that going for ourselves, man. How y'all we going? Uh, I can't complain. Making money, paying bills. That's always a blessing. As long as them bills get paid, because they never stop coming. Mm-hmm. Still breathing above ground. Can't complain about stress. So I think I'm still doing the positivity thing. And they're going good. So I haven't had any real negativity or negative situations try to really bring me anywhere else. So I think I'm doing good. Right on, man. Do you need any support this week or how can we be there for you, you know, other than the normal? Just the normal, just be there for need you. Right on, bitches. Brother Pat, 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 how your week being, man? How's everything going with you? Um, I, I kind of had to restart my week. I had a little moment yesterday. I had to shut down, I had to call off from work. Anxiety was kind of pulling up, chest kind of beating fast. I was like, yep. So I had to recharge my battery, uh, just put myself in exile for like 24 yep. hours. And we're going to restart this thing all over again at the end of the week, which is all right. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Hit, hit the reset <laughs> yeah, button when you need it, man. The reset button is when you need at it. End, no matter what it's level your you week. Are. It's Come your on, week to decide how you do it, brother. Like, you know, it'll depend on nobody else's timeline to show us. So hey, you man. dictate how you value that week. Well, you can restart that bitch at 11 59. I'm like, shit, my week just started now. Shit, it's going to end now. Fuck, I had now. the best week ever. 
Okay. It's yours to dictate how you evaluate it, brother. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm, feeling much better. Uh, just just got off work, so that's part of my loopiness. If I get loopy tonight, you know, mess up some people's names and whatever I do. But yeah, I'm, I'm good. <clears throat> I'm good, man. Well, man, how can we support you, brother? Uh, y'all doing it now. Listen to me rant about how. I got fucked up by my own thoughts yesterday. <laughs> hey man, if you if you know nobody else gets it, brother, we get it. We we we, yeah. we understand. We yeah. totally get it. How can but, we support, uh, bro? Um, right now I'm good. I can't really think of anything else. Pretty much, this to you know talking to bros probably usually helps a lot anyway. So. Yeah. But, oh, um, right on, yeah. man. If it's anything, I'll let y'all know. Y'all know why. And you know we got you, bro, Hamlet. You know we got you. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, my week has been pretty well. Uh, actually, I ain't going to eat front. It's been a good damn week. Um, it was a short week of work. I uh, <clears throat> had, had a couple of days off, so that was cool. Um, got some time to just chill with the fam. Relax. New video game came out. Um, I'm big on this game called Destiny 2. So they had a DLC release. So I was, I've been pounding away at that. Pause. Oh, come on. God damn it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been uh playing that game, that video game. Um, and yeah, man, just relaxing with the fam. Like it's just been a chill week. Um, yeah, man. I, I ain't got not one damn complaint in the world, man. Like, I feel good health-wise. I feel good physically. My my brain is in a decent space this week. Like, you know, other than the normal, just daily anxieties, there's nothing. There's been no, like, panic moments, so that's been huge. You know what I mean? Like, we just chilling, man. We we loving life, living love, baby. Yeah, man. Always good. I'm going to tell you the good, though. I don't need no support. All I need is just just stay there and keep being my bros, man. Life is good. Life is good. And I tell you what else is good? The fact that we starting off and already this early. It's time. It's time, yo. Y'all know that? It is time, y'all. What time is it? What time is it? it? Time for episode 66. Good and fuckery, 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 fuckery. We up in this thing. Yeah, there's a lot of gunshots in this fuckery. Yeah, you might want to add some more. <laughs> Since it's, since it's late, we're gonna we're gonna fly past some of these. It's just gonna be a little bit of announcements to let y'all know that the good stuff that's going on, and then we're gonna get to the fuckery because there's a lot of fuckery going on. Okay. Um, is out, yeah. And it some fuckery just happened. So I and I add, just added it to the like list. So uh, just just then, just today. But um, some of the good stuff. Um. It looks like Curtis 50 Cent Jackson is venturing off into the superhero realm of production. He is actually... The... <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> Jiggly, <jigglypuff>. Go. Go. <laughs> Go to the show, I think. Out of breath, man. But nah, nah. He's producing. He's not in it. Fat guy in a little shirt. <laughs> Fat guy in a little shirt. Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, nah. He's um, he's collaborating with one of my one of my favorite uh comic book writers, Christopher Priest. He actually wrote a lot of stuff for Black Panther or whatever. But um, and they're taking on this um, this new random comic book. I think it's from DC called Zero, spell X E R O. Not Zero. too much, yeah. 
not too much about it. It's, it follows a black government assassin who weaponizes visibility by disguising himself as a white man to blend anonymously into it, the exotic casino royale haunts of the international elite. It sounds real fancy, but I was about to say that's that's a whole lot right there. Ain't it? Yeah, yeah, it is a whole lot. <laughs> it's a whole lot, but that's that's basically what the comic is based off of. Uh, says G Unit Films and Television will produce the up and coming adaptation alongside uh, Erica Alexander. I think that's um, from a living uh, living single, mm-hmm, I mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and Ben Arnon for Color Farm. Joseph, I'm probably going to fuck this name up. Ildich, fuck it up, fuck it up who serves as CEO of the newly launched production publishing company, Illuminous, whatever. But uh, Zero originated from DC Comics. It's one of those. And um, it reverted to, uh, it says a series reverted to Priest in 2008. So he was writing for it. Um, And they got it under Warner Brothers and subsidies. I guess they're working out the last legal parts of it. but. yeah. Okay. It looks like Mr. Curtis Jackson is trying to get his hands into the superhero movie realm or whatever. I don't know if this is officially part of that DC universe, but it looks like something totally different, something separate. But I, I got like confidence because of the writer, they actually got pulled onto it. It's like a he's a very good writer. I I w- I would say I'm going to give it a shot just off the fact of I never watched Power, but I heard good things, so I'll, I'll give him a shot. Like, he hasn't proven to be a failure when it comes to TV or, like, movie, like that realm, so I feel like he got mm-hmm. a shot at pulling it off. Like, he's he's proven he can put the right people in the right places to make things really, really good. Yeah. So I, I give it a shot. Come on, yeah, Fanny. And it is not really, like, like I could see how it could be superhero esque, but it's the way it describe it in the setting that it's in. It's more like James Bondish than anything. It seems like, so I could see him working something, something out like that where it's believable, pretty much. Whatever they might have him come in just for to make it seem like it's more believable. Whatever, get his expertise in it. I'll definitely roll with it. Um, my next bit of fuckery um, if if the robots don't get us and World War 3 don't get us I will say the next generation of humans in the next probably millennium it'll probably be all descendants of Nick Cannon and his eight kids and Kiki Wyatt who is currently pregnant with her 11 kids oh excuse me <clears throat> Kiki, Kiki White Wyatt. got 11 kids? She's on. She's pregnant with her 11th child right now. Yep. There's so many jokes there, y'all. I don't even <laughs> know if I can go, but God. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Yo, um, she got that old 1800s milkmaid cooch. Like, that's that old, like... That's all you do is churn butter and make babies. Like that was back when people was fucking like you'll have like six kids that die of like typhoid fever or, or arthritis or some, some smallpox or some shit. You know what I mean? Like we, we don't really need that type of uh like why do you have a whole football star lineup, man? Mm-hmm. I I don't think that dude should have that like what is Nick Cannon? Like it is time, guy. It may be time for that snip. Like somebody got to tell you, because one of them kids at least is not getting enough time. I'm telling you, she got, she got the Wu Tang, Street Life, Casadonna, Killer Priest. I don't care how rich you are. Like, yes, you can financially take care of them, but what about everything else? It's mm-hmm. no way in the world you're telling me that you are able to give all of them the time that they need when you have that many. It's people out here with three kids that struggle to do that. Six kids, four kids. You got eight and eleven, and you're telling me kids. that you are pulling that shit off flawlessly. 
I don't get and you're and you're a busy ass entertainer. So that means half the time you're not able to be still. It ain't like you got a yeah. job where like I'm picking them up from school, I'm bringing them home, I'm riding them around. We, you know, what I mean, like it's already a strain. All right, whatever. Ain't my bit. All right, mm-hmm. shut up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's she pumping them out, man. It's like factory. All right. <laughs> but yep, uh, it might be a quick chance in the year 2000. It's going to be Cannons and Wyatts. Cannons and Wyatts. <clears throat> Pull out the damn kids. I don't care what nobody says. Let me clear. Both, both of them. Both of them need to just, just relax. Relax. Yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just hilarious. I don't got no sense. Close your damn legs. Close your damn legs. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. <laughs> no segues. Let's just knock, knock them out. Um, so, Trump's social media app goes live in the Apple App Store and it crashes the same day. Oh, and Trump got a hook. Yeah. Yeah, he got kicked off Twitter and everything, so now he got to make his own. He and said he was going to make it. People on that shit, too. hmm But he ain't going to have no server because he's going to try to shortcut everything. And yep. not the people who uh, actually do the website. If his business acumen um, matches up to what his technology is going to be, uh, let, it, let us not forget about Trump University. Or Trump um, mm-hmm. uh, The Trump app probably be yeah it'd probably be that one time thing i don't know if it's gotten back up yet but i'm pretty sure somebody's going to try to keep going in there and try to you know he's good to start something and abandon it when that shit oh, oh never mind i didn't like how that went i don't go over here or something else yeah yep yep that's pretty much it yeah and uh poor trump let's go yeah, something to do. Somebody gotta get that old man something to do. He's the epitome of the old dude that just like he used to be <clears throat> or no big working or something, and now he he retired, but he can't really retire. Like he keep piddling around and fucking with shit around the house, and you be I like, think... now grandpa, like stop stop fucking with the cabinets and shit. But he just bored. Really, he just needs something to do. Like he, somebody got to give him something to do other than golf. I he, think he, if it. What's the name of the place? Shangri La, Shamala, shout out, Shang, <laughs> Shang, whatever that little resort he got. He can't just Mar a Lago. Mar a Lago. Mar a Lago. He said Shangri La. Oh, yeah. Going down there, just playing golf and like acting like like you ain't bored. Like you, it's obvious. Like get that nigga something to do, please. Somebody give him a job. Maybe this, I've maybe already, this app. But give him co- occupied. You know how you know people be stuck on Facebook. Yeah, but he be, be stuck in his own app, and we won't have to worry about him. But no, he needs something to occupy his brain. If he gonna sit there and tweet and stuff to death on his own app, it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be worse because now he ain't got the presidency to stop him. He ain't got no <clears> board like that. That people around him that's like, hey, don't do that. Don't hit send on that. Now he gonna go bonkers. Mm-hmm. Can go absolute ape shit. Mm-hmm. If the world don't go absolute ape shit before he actually goes back, that is a good point as well. <clears throat> yeah, no, well, I, I have no argument there. We can, we're gonna um, go back to that because the world is going ape shit, and let's go back. A bit. Matter of fact, a little bit. Let's let's go right to his friend. His friend, well, who his supposed friend, Mister Kanye West. Um, Kanye to the. Have y'all seen this nigga beef list? This list of beefs that he's had. Oh man, let me, I want to bring it right on up. If this thing would finally load, thank you very much. Loom? Okay, here we go. Load. Oh, I thought you said he was beefing with Loon. I was about to be like Loon. He the nigga. He's beef with Diddy. <laughs> Can't beef with no Loon. And they said Loon will whoop your ass. Loon, loon, loon. Yeah, yeah, Loon. I thought, um, I thought he got loon. some time now. Yeah, he was in jail. Matter of fact, he just got out, didn't he? I, don't I believe know. so. But they said, "Don't run up on Loon." <clears throat> but um, it says Taylor Swift 
Nike, Kim K, his cousin, Wiz Khalifa, Jay Z, Kid Cudi, Billy Elish, Peppa Pig. Yes, oh, Peppa what? Pig. Peppa Pig. The little, <laughs> yes. the little kid book character. Yeah, yeah, he had beef with him. He literally, and I remember this. He literally had beef with Peppa Pig because somehow she beat him in like streams or something like that. Here. <clears throat> We're not finished. Pete Davidson, Drake, Ray J, Justin Timberlake, Jimmy Kimmel, South Park. I remember that too. Uh, he like Mouse. Mm -hmm. Beyonce, Bruno Mars, J. Cole. I remember J. Cole. Travis Scott, Harriet Tubman. <laughs> Harriet Tubman. She is dead, man. Harriet Tubman, Louis Vuitton, the CEO of Zappos, <laughs> Avel Knievel, no, Evil Knievel, Evil Knievel, I spelled that, I said that all wrong, I said Evel. <laughs> Evil, <laughs> that shit came in handy. <laughs> then it's Haysbert, Amber Rose, MTV, Beck, George Bush Jr., yep, remember that. ADL, TMZ, American Music Awards, 50 Cent, I don't think that was a real one, and Chris Jenner. And then he actually reposted it and said, actually, um, it's more than that. Um, <coughs> and he said, Apple, Spotify, the, the Indie, Universal, Lucius Grange, TikTok, Black History Month, Obama, <laughs> the whole cast of SNL, Hillary Clinton, the devil himself, Corey Gamble, Bezos, Charlemagne, Disney, liberals. It, it, it goes on and on. Um, <laughs> somebody get Kanye something to do. They did. He got a whole um album release party not too long ago. When he, yeah, no, that ain't enough. Like he needs something. It's never enough. Like he's doing too much. Like, come on, bro. Like, why would you <laughs> add to that? But sex, like, why do you have that many people that you didn't leave with? Like, your shit longer than six nine. Like, it's gang, it's real gangsters in the street that ain't got that many beef, and they like longer than fifty cent. I thought fifty cent had the longest list that you've had, sir. That what you know? Uh, why are you happy about that? <clears throat> uh, maybe he was just being honest. Yeah, you being honest, but I mean, goddamn. You mm -hmm. named off a good 40, 50 people before you said what he had. It. Like, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he got, he got issues. We all know that. Just make Kanye. Make e. man. I like your album. Give me a Donda 2 right now. Don't, don't do this dumb shit. Yeah, and he said he got to buy the little um, stem player for 200 just to get the album, the Donda 2 album or whatever. I, I'm pretty sure after a while it'll be available everywhere. But, yeah, I think he's pulling a, a Nipsey Hussle move for, for a second. I'll whatever. never hear it until the people that get the machine go ahead and uh, download that to the internet. But mm -hmm. It's going to happen. That's going to happen. Title. But uh, from fake beef to real beef to war. <laughs> um, man, y'all saw Russia, man. Yo. Ru Russia blew up um, Ukraine's international airport. Now, more than ever. Fuck Putin. Fuck yep. you, Putin. Use a bitch ass nigga. And fuck you bad. Use a bitch nigga for not running up on him already and smoking this fool out. He's no more than a terrorist, just like everybody else, just because he's the president of his little. Somebody else should be running that country. They got some comments. Fuck you, poop. I said it. Yeah, I said it. Biden talking about putting sanctions out, um, like economic sanctions and stuff like that. They don't calm it down. And 
fuck about them after he thanks to them 30 yeah. times. Yeah, he didn't give a fuck because after he did that, that's when he um blew up that international airport in the Ukraine. And, and then he said, Yeah, anybody interferes. No, I gotta find the quote. Anybody interferes I saw the quote. And then Evel can never tell to you. <laughs> oh man, oh man, I'm gonna find this because I got this. Because he, he said some super villain shit, man. He said you will get a response that has never been seen in history or something like that. Uh, we've seen enough. We don't need no more responses that ain't never been seen in history. I'm good on what, what I've seen so far. History has shown me enough so far in my little short life. I'm good. What say ye, if I say RT? Well, all right. But yeah, now I can't even find the freaking quote. It was right there. But he basically said, yeah, try me. Pretty much. That's pretty yeah, much what he said. Because he, he know Biden and our government ain't going to really do nothing. We so worried about what the backlash would be, we still yeah. for the trigger. Like it's time to just run up on this nigga, man. Ah, oh. fuck that shit, man. He's that been going at it for the past thirty years. Thirty years. Nigga's been mm-hmm. the, the leader. How long has he been a leader over there? Shoot, since nineteen, yeah, since nineteen ninety nine, ninety eight, yeah. As soon as they got yeah. rid of that board, I, I think it was that they used to have that big yeah, market. yeah, because he was uh, um, yeah. he was in the KGB and grew up in the he moved up in the rank, and then the way I read, he kind of just ran up in there. It was like, uh, give me this, you, me, give me the loot, give me the loot. I, I'm in control now, it's me, it's my I'm shit. captain now. I'm the captain. Who's in charge here? Me, wow. Who's in charge here? You? I think so. That's pretty much how that shit went. Consequences greater than any in history. That's what he says. This shit is crazy. America, go ahead and call him up. Tell him let the shoot let him <laughs> made with tears. And, and we settle it like that, man. We call it a day, man. Fuck that little nigga up. For free. Mm-hmm. Give black people reparations, though. You ain't even got to give me reparations. Give black people. <clears throat> you can skip me and give every other black person reparations, and I'll whoop the shit out this nigga, and we can settle this shit and be done with it. He ain't got to shoot him or nothing. I just whoop his ass. I can bring in the uh, handcuffs. We can go on about our day. Like, we ain't got to keep dealing with this bullshit. This shit is stupid. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, Putin. We can handle that however you want to handle it, Chief. One on one. With the hands, the feet, the pistols, whatever. Because I've been saying fuck. Now, now I got a good, a good tangible reason at the moment. In the in in the in the in the press. Oh fuck you, Pooh. You probably you probably had every time uh, you said it, you probably had a reason um behind the scenes why you could say oh, he's fuck been you doing Putin. fuck shit like this. He just did this. Yeah. He just did this same thing Ain't nothing new. three years ago. Mm-hmm. He did nothing. And we're right back here. He did it, what, eight or nine, ten years ago. Like, he's been doing fuck shit. Like, he just said, oh, I, I want this country. Yeah, I know what y'all said. I know we're not going back to the USSR. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Boom, boom, boom. Give me this shit. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> fuck your sanctions. Send somebody over here if you want. Mm-hmm. That's and basically what they said. Back. Go riding horses and making himself look fake big because he make people take shots from low angles. Nigga, I know you a little bitch. Putin. Fuck you, Putin. Vladimir. Whoop your ass, let my son get the Putin on your face. Bitch ass. You still you still got bullets and them guns on your side? Cause uh Oh, we stay strapped for a 
uh, if you can go ahead and hit that machine gun one more time for the fire, uh, because we got two more people to add to the fire squad. Shoot them up, bang, bang, bang. <clears throat> um, Miss Cynthia Perkins. Miss Cynthia Perkins, um, 36 year old ex Louisiana teacher, and her ex husband, Dennis Perkins, former SWAT officer. Oh, freak body. This is so disgusting. She served children cupcakes with her ex husband's sperm in it. <clears throat> oh, I hope she go to hell on scholarship. Nice ass shit. If I can buy, them, if I can bump them up to first class in any way. I, I don't mind bumping. Them up. Oh, when they get in jail, they and they and people figure out they did something to kids, they gonna get it anyway. And he an ex SWAT um officer too. Oh, they yeah. Oh, oh yeah, they're really good. I give y'all permission, prisoners. Right. With 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 jelly. I know how y'all like jelly. Like, Tell me, I don't man, know what the just, fuck y'all like. Don't care what y'all like, but yeah, fuck him up. And <clears throat> need to send all pedophiles to the Senegalese Islands, man. To where? To Senegalese Island. The Sentinel Island, North Sentinel Island, for the Senegalese people. Oh, okay. Yeah, send all the pedophiles over there with them. Well, that'll end things quickly. Because nobody makes it past the beach. There's another one. Um, it's another island like that in Malaysia or whatever. Like every time they go to there, they don't they don't come back. <clears throat> they don't come well, back at all. Because I'm out fucking with these kids. They wonder why kids walk around crap these days. That why. Mm-hmm. They had to go to school and they teach her trying to give them some nasty ass cupcakes. Fucking weirdos. Uh, Fucking weirdos. But, uh, well, I, I, want, I, I, I really need to like, I know mental health is real, but some of these folks ain't, some of these folks just like horrible people. Like, yeah. yeah. Disgusting fuckers. No sympathy. I hope, I hope whatever the maximum extent of law is, applies to them and I hope that while they're in jail serving their time, I hope the maximum See, free justice. They need to create a position in the in a in a criminal in a criminal justice system for a motherfucker to think of creative punishment. You feel me? Like for their punishment, I will let loose wild hungry dogs on them. Let's let who's the and that'll be the like on silence of the lamb too. Oh, you yeah, throw him in the, in the hog pit. Yeah, throw him in the hog pit. Sweet. <laughs> but yeah, see, I, I let the dogs. I'm gonna be more ravenous. Something need to happen to him. That shit is hard. That part. That part. But yeah, um, guns to them and uh that ends the fuck fucker. you cynthia <laughs> and your husband both of y'all bitches shots to you shots to you and they look like every they don't you know they look like they could any old everyday person that you see at walmart that's great fucking hey. freaks let me see him at walmart hopefully you ain't gonna see him nowhere anytime soon Big fact. So no more period. That's definitely been some fuckery tonight, boy. I tell you that. that damn. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, hell we I mean, we had good weeks, but the world is falling the fucking apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, while we already at war, let's go ahead and war over this next <clears throat> round. We got the second half of the quarterfinals of the top MCs before 2000. We are finishing it up so that we can turn it over to y'all and start getting our pod squad votes in this coming week. We are finally ready to do this. Hopefully I don't get cursed out by Pat. But we're going to say, <laughs> if y'all have forgot, 
This is round by round. At the end of this round, all the rounds going forward with the pod squad will get a vote uh, via our online bracket that will be released on all of our social media platforms. You click the link, you hit the who you want to win each uh, part of the bracket. You get two votes to our one. So basically, what that can, what that looks like is we can outvote you three to two, or if one of us is voting for somebody and you agree with that person, you essentially tip the scales and automatically make that minority vote a majority vote. So your vote is super important. So be looking out for that. And the three criteria we we chose to determine if somebody was an MC and what how we would determine who moves on in each round is as follows: marketability how much you are able to sell, how much money you are able to generate, how much uh, your face card, your abilities as an MC have allowed you to generate funds for yourself and others. Um, the next one is stage presence. How much you're able to rock the mic, MC, as they say, and how you deliver your lyrics, like how you present your hip hop in a way that makes people captivated. And then obviously the lyricism. What are you saying? How are you putting the words together? How was your technical skill at putting words together? Are you doing multi-syllabic flows? Are you switching up flow patterns? Are you giving me three different cadences in one song? Are you coming with original concepts? Are you writing your own lyrics, obviously? Um, yeah, and, and is that as a higher level than others? So with that being said, let's go ahead and unveil where we are currently in this bracket. Give it one second, bong bong. We'll just do that. Can y'all see that there, my people? I see, I see. Ah, awesome. So I'm glad, I am glad. All right, all right. So what we got here, folks, is where we are so far. We got, hold up, let's do this. Am I not allowed to do that on this? This is gonna be a hard. There it is. All right. So we already got on the on, on the on this other side here. We got Eminem and Buster Rhymes, and we got Ghostface Killer and Nas. And this is the side we are working on tonight. See where we're at. We got some heavy hitters on this side, and um, this could the winner of this entire thing could come from this side. Like that's how solid this side is. There's no fucking around over here. So uh. Y'all see it on the screen. Where y'all want to start, fellas? <clears throat> Might as well start from the top. Bottom. The top. The bottom. Oh, the top. All right. Let's get right into it. First up, Red Man versus KRS One, the teacher versus Money. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to take it first, or I can for sure jump right on in with this one. I'll let one of y'all go first, man. Bet it you up. Go ahead, Ted. Uh, I'll start with lyricism. I'm going to give that to Redman. I believe KRS One has done more for the entire industry of hip hop, but when it comes to straight up what you say and how you put words together, KRS One has not evolved as much. Whereas Redman came out of the gate as a very high lyricist, and he's been able to evolve and stay a high lyricist throughout generations. That says a lot with your pen being able to continuously adapt and evolve to what new listeners are looking for. So Redman mm -hmm. gets lyricism for me. Um, when it comes to marketability, this is the more tough one just because of the longevity of KRS One. He's definitely had a lot of albums. He's toured a lot, he has book sales, he has um, speaking engagements, he, he, he's international for sure. So um, it's tough because you then got Red Man who because of his partnership with Method Man and his own merit um, has also generated a lot of funds, especially off touring, like his show with Method Man, like everywhere they go, they sell out. So like, it's, mm -hmm. it's different. So um, I think what separates this is the longevity. I feel like KRS-One has had more time to span generate generations where kids know him as well as really old people. Like our parents and them know KRS-One, whereas some of our parents may not be as familiar with Red Man. You know what I mean? But like everybody know KRS-One. So I'll, I'll go with KRS-One on marketability. 
and then when it comes to the subject of stage presence. This is probably the closest one because they are both monsters on stage. Like they mm-hmm. stage up, you, you're going to get your money's worth, period. I would say I'm going to give this. I'm going to give this to the teacher off the mere fact of when he is freestyling in like um, a sway in the morning setting or when he's on stage in front of 30,000 people or when he like he has more ways that he can captivate the crowd. He can go into the freestyle off the, the acapella bag. He can go into his hits bag. He can go into like actually getting live and jumping around on the stage. Like he get, he he'll bring that energy to his show. Um, I, I just feel like he he has more facets to it. Like he can read a poem and captivate the fuck out of you with just his delivery. Like he he just has one of those presences that just soaks up the energy in the room. So I'm gonna give it to KRS One on a slight edge to one, but KRS One gets my vote. Oh, I'm sorry. You want to take a pick? Um, you can go if you want to, Faith. All right. Um, I'll start with um stage performance. Um, as Ted stated, the stage performance is pretty close. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and give that to Raider Man. Um, uh, I'm a smoker for a Marion Man show. Um, nothing wrong with a KRS show. It's just that's would be a personal opinion. And that's what we're given. So, yeah, go out for a red man on the stage. Um, marketability. Um, due to longevity, KRS has put itself in different, a lot of different avenues. But some of those avenues he's put himself in aren't for money. Therefore, a cause of the culture and a cause that empower black people. So that's not marketability. Marketability, that's notice, notoriety. So I can't equate that in the same realm. If I'm talking about Method Man and his marketability and his range of different things he can make money from. Um, he got the movies, he got the um, cartoon voiceovers. He got. He said Red Man. Yeah, they had that Red Man and Meth cartoon. Oh, okay. Um, it ain't last long, but yeah. Um, Red Man got some a little bit different shit going on. Um, so when it comes to marketability, I gotta look at it differently. So I'm gonna have to come back to that after I talk about lyricism to give it a definite decision on marketability because I still got to ponder on that one because. He, uh, when looking at KRS, you really got to look at what realms can he make money from differ from what realms he can just step in and be able to have an influence in. Um, lyrics, uh, method man, I mean, yeah, Red Man, excuse me, Red Man's in my top five um, of hip hop artists. He's in my top five, but KRS isn't. Um, mm. he is the teacher he is the teacher but in the conversation you have with most people for some reason you don't find him in the top 5 of their list he may be in their top 10 but he's not in their top 5 off the top of the head um, I don't like like he got his message and he gets his message out clearly but his style of presenting his lyrics I don't get down with it's more boom bappy um it's, it's like it, yeah if you like um it's like he didn't transition his style throughout the decades how he came out his flow and his presentation has stayed consistent but that's him and that's what he's known for but as time change sometimes change is good for me not all change is needed but sometimes those changes that are needed are, are quite overlooked. Um, I feel like the presentation of his lyrics could have changed over the years and gave him a bigger prowess as far as in the culture and as far as conversations mm-hmm. such as these. So um, 
lyrics, I'm going to give it to Redman. Um, marketability, I'm going to give that to KRS because his not his notoriety and his noticeability comes from him being marketable and the things he's done. So him being able to step in different fields comes from what he says and where he's able to say it from. So I, I, I give him that one. So who did I give it to on stage present? Uh I think you gave it to Red Man. Yeah, I think with Red Man. So I'm gonna go Red Man two two Red Man two one. Okay. We got a tie here, Pat. Mm. Who you who, who you running with? Money Waters or Oh, this this one's going uh this is a tough one because one is one rapper that I like try to study um, myself as far as being a better rapper. And then one gave me a mic. So uh, yeah, let's see, let's go first. Stage presence. I'm gonna give stage presence to Karis one. I wanna give it to Red Man too, because he has the same amount of stage presence, but like you said, Tiz, he could do no matter what he do, he controls the crowd. Yeah. Anytime he's around, if he's around, he just he got that presence where if he's around and he wants to say something, people Different. will listen. Yeah. yeah. It's like he got like it's like a you know, a preacher like a well-known preacher around or a well-known activist or something like that you know like it's like it's almost like he, you're around you like Farrakhan is around you or something like that and like that's so real. that's real he is he is kind of like the Farrakhan of hip-hop but so I give that to stage presence because I give stage presence to Karis one because th to be real that might be Karis one is probably somebody red man study himself as far as stage presence, whatever, from in general, they didn't necessarily, they, they're in, they're kind of in the same age or whatever. Like, uh, I would say Red Man's probably at the tail end of KRS One's age in rap or whatever. And he goes into the, you know, mid 90s pretty much and onward. But yeah, the ended off stage presence. I'm giving that to Karis one. Uh, let's. I would say lyricism. Lyricism is this is tough or whatever because Karis one says a lot of real shit or whatever. Not to say that Red Man don't say real shit, but Red Man is way more creative with his cadence, flow, and punchlines, and bars, or whatever. Like, Red Man, <clears throat> how to say, Red Man is one of the, is the rapper's rapper. Like, he's, the, the, the top tier rappers that you think about, they look at Red Man, or whatever. Like, he, I've even heard Eminem say, hey, like, Red Man is, like, one of his top five pretty much whatever so i'm giving lyricism a red man marketing man you gave me the mic but i'm giving marketing to red man just because karis one is kind of anti-marketing hmm. he's kind of like he's he's kind of anti that that Marketing is is kind of like persuading and and pushing the society into agreeing that this particular product is worth consuming, pretty much. Okay. KRS One's thing is basically telling you, "Hey, this is just some people telling you that this is good for you." It may not actually be good for him, whatever. Like he's he's like he's he's that he's anti-establishment or whatever. So in that realm or whatever, it still might be things where there's like charities involved and uh, things where you you're doing like 
what is that word? It's like philanthropy and stuff like that, where you you give it back to community. But as far as just like making money and making some type of um like some type of push or some type of uh like pushing some type of product or something like that, I would give it to Red Man more. One, I've seen Red Man in more commercials. <laughs> Two, I've seen Red Man in more um, pop culture in general. He has his own like cult like fan base. It's damn near like a like a Cheech and Chong fan base, a fan base that care uh, that that face partakes in. Also, I can't say that I don't either. <laughs> so, so I'm giving it to Red Man. Okay. Two one. Red Man moves on. The teacher is out of here. Hey, people, we told y'all this one's gonna get a little. Your favorite rapper may be up out of here. Up out of here. Man. And then Red Man's partners coming in against him. Boom, boom, bam, we got two. boom, bam, boom, 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 bam, bam. First, look at that. Um, I don't even want to do this. Hard. Yeah, this one. Wanna... Yeah, this is horrible. <laughs> so it is pretty bad. bad. It is pretty bad. Some somebody that we love is going up out of here. Mm-hmm. But I'll kick it off. Um, down. Yeah. Um. Stage presence met the man. I'm not even going to argue that. I, I I feel like that's pretty clear to, in my book. Um, when it comes to marketability, I'm going to venture to say, since we have one that's no longer able to generate, so I'm not going to go longevity-wise, what I would use is like at their peak, at their individual peaks, how big was this person? How much money were they making? How was the album sales? How was, et cetera, touring? How was endorsements, movies, all that? And I'm going to say at, the, at his peak, Tupac may be one of the top three biggest hip hop artists ever at his peak. Mm -hmm. as as who he was making, like this dude was in a film every, like every six months. He was and crushing it in the film. So they were like making decent bread. He was like advertising shit. I remember seeing him on St. Ives commercials. I'd be waking up in the mornings on uh, watching my cartoon, St. Ives commercial. Come on, this nigga. Him and Snoop, like Snoop was there. I mean, Tupac was everywhere, bro. So I'm, I'm going to give marketability to Tupac um, just off of their peaks. Um, I go to lyricism. This one is tough because there's two different type of rappers. You got one that's more of an intricate rapper. Um, you got another one that's more of a straight ahead style rapper. You also have one that had to evolve with the time and another one that kind of was only around for a certain time. So he never really had to change anything. Um, and then you also have one that's more based off emotion in their rapping what they're saying as opposed to how they're saying it. And then you have another one that's more based on like how they're saying it as opposed to necessarily what they're saying. So it's a very different perspective they're both coming from. But I'm going to say this is more preference for me. And yeah, Tupac is my second favorite rapper ever. So I'm going to go with Tupac. Um, I feel like part of the lyricism and putting words together is making people having words that last the test of time. And I would venture to say pretty bravely that there are more Tupac quotables that the average person can snap to the front of their brain quicker than they would be a Method Man lyric. So sometimes intricacy can go to a detriment of like, they're not memorable past the time that they were spit. And I think when you go bar for bar, I think Tupac has way more classic lyric moment. Um, so yeah, and sometimes simplicity is key in, in writing. Like sometimes you, it, it's key to say more with less. So Tupac wins 2-1 for me. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make this quick and simple, man. Tupac 3 0. Um, you don't need to even have a conversation in two different realms of MCs. So, Tupac 3 0. Well, Pat, did you well, want to give your perspective for <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Both of these rappers are in my top five. One of these rappers is the reason why I wanted to rap. I'm going to pick that rapper, Method Man. Okay. I'm not going to explain shit. <laughs> Method Man's always been a, my favorite rapper. He, at least he didn't get dirty 30 because we've had a lot of 30s in this bracket since the beginning. So at least he didn't mm-hmm. get dirty. So I, I'll take that 2 1 Tupac moves on, guys. Makes and I really wanted to see Tupac the Red Man. For- yeah, we're going to have that would have up against Method, Method Man's brother. That would have been a crazy battle if it was Method Man versus Red Man. That would that would have been one for the ages. I ain't gonna even front. Yeah, I won't. I don't even think if I can figure that one out. But yeah, let me uh, uh, let me um say even more that yeah, Method Man's my favorite rapper. Tupac is one of my favorite rappers. I don't even care because I knew that y'all were gonna pick Tupac anyway, and I feel like I would be disloyal if I didn't pick Method Man because I the reason why I wanted to rap anyway. Matter of fact, he's like the main rapper I ever want to meet. I can talk to respect it, bro. I'm not mad at you. Mm-hmm. Ride for mm-hmm. you. When you pick your horse, stick with your pick. Mm-hmm. And now we have the next round. Common. Common sense. Versus Scarface. Never met a man to cry till I seen that man die. Anybody um, want the floor first? Um, I'll go first. I just my personal preference, man. I really don't fuck with comment too too much because um his presentation is saying to me over and over. Don't get me twisted. Very talented MC, lyrically gifted, um, different realms of marketability. Um Day show, not all there for me. Um, but Scarface is like, I, say, I'm, I love a Southern MC, man. I, I grew up on Southern hip hop. So, man, I'm more biased to Southern. I'm lyrical in this competition. I'm going to give it to Scarface. Um, marketability, I will have to give it to a common. Stage presence, stage show, I'm going to give it to Scarface. Um, Scarface 2 1 for me. Okay. Man, this one is tough um, because I'm kind of bound by our metrics. Um, when, when we set up the criteria, I, I, I fear the moments like this. When it comes to lyricism, I give it to Scarface all day. I don't think it's even close lyrically. Um, I definitely think Common has used his lyricism in a wider range. So he's definitely shown more versatility in his lyricism, but as far as the actual skill of putting pen to paper and coming up with a, a, a wonderful way to, to say something, Scarface is, a, is one of them dudes when it comes to that in hip hop. Like he's a lot of our favorite rappers, favorite rappers. So like, he's one of them. So I'm not even gonna question his lyric. Scarface all day on the lyricism. Um, when it comes to the stage show, I got to give it to Common, though. Um, I f- I've been to a Common show and seen him live. I've seen videos of Scarface, um, but by himself, I haven't seen him, like, really command that presence. Like, he's commanding on his, on the, on the track, but his presence in person, like, watching him and stuff is not there to me. So I, I would give that to Common, actually. And then marketability, and this is where it kills me because the metrics kill me because if it was just lyricism, Scarface would win hands down and I I couldn't even question it. But when it comes to marketability, Common is one of the most marketable rappers we've seen in a while, like from movies to Oscar winning uh, hit records to like 
the record sales are there, the touring is there, the like he 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 checks all of the boxes, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to endorsements, like all of that. So like he's definitely been more marketable just because Scarface prefers to keep a low key. So with a begrudging heart, a very fucking begrudging heart, I gotta say two one comedy. Had a tattoo. All right. Uh, I'm probably going to be right there with you because uh, looking at it, first of all, I want to give lyricism to Scarface just because, yeah, it's just not big. Now, don't get me wrong, there was a freestyle from Common not too long ago that, that kind of like, all right, I haven't seen this Common in a while. Like, you know, you you get that comment sometimes where he's just playing around and he say thicka da thicka da 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 da. He just the the last word is the only word that's rhyming or whatever. But he's saying some extra deep shit or whatever. But it, or whatever. But when he's going off top, but his last freestyle I think it was on a L.A. Leakers or whatever. I was like, oh okay, um, you might just win up a couple of notches in the bar like. It wasn't those normal, goofy, one-word rhyming lines that he was saying. It was some, some, yeah, I, I can put it to right beside a Black Thought Method Man freestyle and it would fit type shit. But I would say we have more record of Scarface saying something that would that you can relate to. A lot more. Not to say Common doesn't have songs where you don't relate that you you can't relate to, but Scarface he can hit you right in the chest with some of the stuff he he talks about. Punch it. But, Scarface yep. punch you in the chest. Knock it. Um, now, as far star as far as stage presence, I, I got to give it a comment because I've seen Common be on stage. I see Common. Common is always ready to randomly say a freestyle, even if he don't got nothing on the mind or or whatever. He will think of something, and then out of the fly, he might come out with some crazy, something crazy out the top or whatever. Right. So I, I give it that. And just because Common is really, it's like you said, Common's been, Common's been in the White House. Yep, you don't get more marketable than that. <laughs> pretty much he's, he kind of got like the obama endorsement so yeah like i said they just like y'all said begrudgingly i gotta give it a comment off of metrics oh boy two one kill us in the comments i know i know comment yeah, y'all the comments. <laughs> yeah I, i'm ready for it put it in the comments i hear it kill the ass and kill the ass in the comments <laughs> hey man, I said as as, that's about as much as uh, remorse as I'm a show for this. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, uh, damn it. Who we got next? Who next? Who next? Passed up in this round. <sighs> and then we bring it to you, Pod Squad. We got Cool G Rap. Versus Jay Z. I'll get mine out of the way quick, just because this is gonna be my most biased moment. Jay Z three zero. I, I, that's my favorite rapper. I, I think he does everything greater than the other rappers. So I'm gonna just go ahead and say him three zero right here. I, I'll argue, but um, I got a more of an argument. Let's see. Uh, we can go into the conversation and be like, "Well, Cool G rap." Came out before Jay, so Jay could have studied Cool G rap before he came. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I fuck with Jigga, Jigga, my nigga Jigga. That's who yeah. I grew up on. That's who. That's the. That's the only rapper I purchased. I purchased every album of. Um, lyrical, lyrical content. The lyrical content has been there on every single album. I can't say it's one song that he did not deliver on lyrically. Um Jay Z. Um, Even that whack ass kingdom. So and yes, 
the biggest oh. Jay Z fan says. Hey, he still delivers. Um, marketability. Uh, that's that's a silly ass question. That's Jay Z. Come on now. Stage show. Billionaire um, Jay Z. Exactly. Stage show. Come on now. That's a silly ass question. Jay Z. You might not like him. You might not relate to him now in 2022. But hey, he's still, how they say, the God MC. Jay Z, man, hands down. Three. Amen. Amen. Pat, did you want to give your perspective? All right. Um, so yeah, I want to give it the cool G rap. I'm joking. <laughs> I just went to the freak out for a second. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, you already told me you don't give a damn. If I don't give a damn, I ain't fucking with you, Pat. <laughs> Look, this is the reasons why I'm picking Jay-Z, okay? Because I feel like I should at least give the reasons why. But yes, Cool G rap is, lyric, is lyrical. If we're going to go at lyricist, um, he probably, probably is the architect to how a lot of people use syllables and rhymes. Absolutely. Period. Yeah, free shit. Yeah. But Jay-Z, content-wise, has more things that people can relate to. Cool G rap is the epitome of gangster and street bar rap. And that's where you're stopping at. He's his days pretty much. Way in them. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's where he's you're stopping at. Don't get me wrong. I have the moments. That's all I want to listen to. I just want to listen to that or whatever. But you know, then, then sometimes you don't want to listen to that. Jay-Z gives you a good medium of everything, pretty much. He, he's like, he's balanced and all around. He might not be the most rapidly rap lyrical, but he's, but he's goddamn good and goddamn close to being it, pretty much. He might not be... Um, I can't even say that because over the longevity, over the years or whatever, his content is a lot more conscious, pretty much, or whatever. So, like, he's actually grown over the years, and we've seen it, <laughs> lived it, lived with it, pretty yeah, much. Grown up with him. Mm -hmm. Now, all right, so we did lyricism, stage present. You can give Jay Z just himself in a band and it's the greatest shit in the world. Now, to this day, anytime I hear like Jay-Z with a live band, I like it better than the actual song. Pretty much. Yeah. So Look, it was amazing. He did a whole concert with his B-sides. Some people didn't even know what a hell a B-side was or whatever. And it was it was great. This, like his B sides are probably some a lot of people A sides, <laughs> um, just in general as far as their own content, and music in general. And then I'm not gonna say anything about market. I say it on almost every other good and fuckery about market. I'm matter of fact for the rest of this for the rest of this uh top MCs tournament, I'm not saying shit about Jay-Z's marketing because it ain't shit to say. <laughs> Jay Z is admit, Yeah. Jay-Z can win market. The, yeah. the only yeah. argument is maybe president lyricism after this. Yeah. Agreed. And then nobody's topping him on market at all Dirty. it Dirty. might hurt their marketing it might hurt their marketing <laughs> if they try to top his marketing well we booked it next week Jay-Z versus Karma and here oh, we man. have it folks we have your 
top MC before 2000 tournament as it stands. This is the bracket that you guys will be voting on next week. Over the coming week, you got Eminem versus Busta Rhymes, Ghostface Killer versus Nas, Red Man versus Tupac, and Common versus Jay Z. We got some good debates and good presentations to present next week. And next week, your vote will be counting as two. So please make sure you vote. Uh, the link will be out all week until we record again next week. So please make sure you vote. Or uh, every vote counts. Every vote counts. All right. Um. So that is the top MC um, before 2000. Get your votes in. As you can see, we've, we've had some uh, picks there that may have gone against the grain. But you know, we, we known to do that around these parts. And uh, I see no oh, uh, yeah. better time than right now to continue that trend in faith. Let's kick let's it off. Let's go against the grain. Let's go, let's go against the grain. Let's go against the grain. So this week I'm gonna start it off with my number one thing. I think the driving limit age should be the same limit age as the retirement age. You should not be able to drive anymore after you reach the retirement age. These old ass drivers are dangerous as shit out here and somebody needs to do something about it. Yo, you wow. <laughs> <laughs> What about, like, what about like a 55, 65 year old person that's still completely lucid, drives perfectly, has no issues whatsoever? When you yeah, get to test. retirement age, you should no longer be able to drive. <laughs> they got Uber, they got Uber, they got this is the age of technology. Your old ass don't need to drive no more. Man, they all fixed things. Say your ass where you need to go and let somebody else drive you. They're gonna be broken. Yeah. Be hungry as fuck. Yeah. Oh, 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 with... Okay, I have a solution for I have a solution for that. Got a solution for that. Come up with our elder Uber. A Uber designated for old uh, old people. You feel me? Since them. they can't drive no more. I would I would, I would drive elder them. Uber. That would be the fun. Elder Uber. Uber. You feel me? They already got that. They got that in their insurance. Old folks gonna be they got like a little shuttle for the for the jig. But this is my something. thing. Every, everybody don't want to be on a shuttle. Everybody don't like everybody. Sure. When you get older, you don't want to be dealing with other motherfuckers. You just want to get in the car and go much business. But since you can't drive no more, you can go on your elder Uber app, tap ride, they take you where the hell you gotta go, bring you back, go home in the fucking house. Don't what let is, these old motherfuckers drive, man. What After is, what, what is, is it? What's happening? You 65? 65, you're done. I oh, don't know, man, because I don't want to end up driving my parents around. And I, I still might want to drive around when I'm 65. So, like, what if we have Uber. them take a test? Take a I'm test. They that. pass the test. It's way, it, it's way to cheat the test. They owe this shit. They didn't rem, they memorize this shit. Come on. They memorize, the, they memorize this shit. When you, when you get to retirement age, your, your, your license is retired. They, they hang that shit up like the jersey. Hang that license up like a jersey, goddamn! You're done. I don't know about that. Yeah, but yeah. I would definitely say at least have it so like every three to four years you got to renew your license. And when you mm-hmm. renew it, they just okay, go back. I work with you. Or nothing like that. Like you got. I work with you. We take a whole driver's test, and it ain't. I ain't talking about the written test. I'm talking about like you got to go back on the road and have somebody check off that like you ain't out there driving 20 miles an hour in a 50 mile an hour zone and. Like swerve. Okay, I work with you. Because I'm going to be the old man that's like, hey, so, nobody ever drive for me a day in my life. So <laughs> when that. you reach 65, you got to have you got to have a four seasons test. You got to come in to the DMV once you reach 65, once every season. So you can prove you can drive in every fucking type of weather. Oh, I'm definitely, you, I'm you definitely coming on the solstice and the equinox. I'm coming right on the on the cusp. Oh, I'm coming <laughs> for the day after a boat. All four, got you. No problem. We're gonna we're gonna get two of these out of the way in, in, to to in, 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 in two days. Bow, bow. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I see you again in six months. In these two days, me up, being crafty I'm enough to realize the equinox that. and come in at that time, I should get a pass just because I'm crafty enough to think about hey. it. If they think about it, think about it. But shit, my number two, um, a lot of people gonna be mad, but lace fronts and them fake eyelashes look silly as fuck. Take that shit off, man. <laughs> 
That's just me. That I, it is my unpopular opinion. It's a popular thing in the world, but guess what? It like looks I'm not silly mad. as fuck to me. Lace fronts and them fake ass eyelashes. The motherfucker do like this. Yo, know, like you got caterpillars on your face. You can't see through them shit. Why the fuck? What's the purpose of that shit? I don't. I don't get it. Oh my like, god, you want long? Right? You want you want you want cartoonishly big eyelashes to walk around? No one grows the eyelashes that big. You you can't. They want them. It's not a physical problem. So you, like, you, 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 Betty Boop just want that goddamn big. Like goddamn, you, you want some, your like, eye some start hurting. Yeah. You're like, like what the, what, what the fuck? Like, if one of them should get in your eye, you fuck. You fuck. Yeah. Take that my silly eyelashes shit off. get in my eye and it hurts every single time. I, 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 can, I can put these lace fronts on, lace front on, and I ain't got to wear my hair for what. Yeah, you look silly as fuck. For a fucking while, everyone knows you have a lace front on. And that's, your forehead don't look like that for real. Come on now, yeah. this shit looks silly. Take that shit the fuck off, man. Just because it's popular, don't mean it's only popular because a few motherfuckers started doing it. Anybody want to tell the ass nothing about it? Everybody else is caught on. Stop that silly shit. I'm gonna start a rumor on lace fronts. You know, I'm gonna start a rumor. I'm gonna say COVID came from lace fronts. Boy, you a fool. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Blue monkey. I'm gonna say COVID. COVID front. I'm gonna COVID. COVID came from lace front show. See him up and stop wearing them. Mm-hmm. Take that shit the fuck out, wig. man. So, what y'all got for against the grain this week, man? Oh man, I got you. Um, my first one is: don't call me unless it's an emergency or at least something serious. Just text me. I hate talking to people on the phone. I don't want to, I don't want to pick up. I don't want to have no small talk moments. Like if it's something serious, cool. Let, let, let's get that conversation going. Like we got some action we can jump into, or at least I, I'm listening to something that feels like it got some gravity to it. But like people who like to just call and be like, Hey, how you doing? I'm just calling to check in, check in on what you could have sent me a text. <laughs> you, you good? Yeah. And we, we've checked in. What, what are we discussing? Like, what? Do you have anything to discuss? Or at least call me and have like some cool to talk about. Like, hey, did you see that uh, that basketball play? Or hey, oh my God, they got this new movie coming out. I think you love it. And 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 have some shit that you excited to talk about. Don't call me to just ramble on and we just on the phone. Like, I don't call my fucking phone. I know it's a phone, but I'll be honest with you. I ain't like talking. On, I stopped talking on the phone when I was about seventy. <laughs> That was the last year that I was like in high school. And that was the last year that I was like on them little calls like that. After that, I started pulling up. The most I do is, hey, I'm on the way. Hey, bro, I'm on the way. Hey, Charlotte, I'm like, it ain't none of this. Man, what the fuck are we talking about? Don't call my fucking phone. I don't know if that's against the grain or not, but I, I hate phone. I just text me. Yeah, I maybe wish, against I wish the grain to some way pages. Like just, just, just send it in a message. You're running with me. Give me the option if I, I want to talk. I must concur. I do not like verbal call, call, calls, man. I don't, I don't like verbal calls, man. Like I, I don't, I don't see the purpose for them. Like unless it's an emergency, or unless you need like t- t- tell me something. Like if you just call and just sit on the phone, like hey, I just call four. Man, I just want to come up and see what's it's, up. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's shit up. I so, can do Zoom. People call you. People call you. And be like, hey, what you doing? What? Chilling. I'm. I'm not doing shit. What the fuck are you doing? I'm not just want to call you. So you just want to call and see what the fuck I'm doing at this moment in time. That don't seem weird to you. And I just wanted to call and see what the fuck I was doing. Did you? I did you want to do something with me? Did you why? did you have something you wanted to discuss with me? You wanted to go somewhere? No. So why is what the fuck I'm doing right now? Man? No, don't call me with needless conversation. Call me with conversation that has a point. Let's, let's get to a point. Let's discuss something. If you got a problem, let's have let's figure out a solution together. But I agree. Don't call me on no bullshit. You know, I, I'm the worst because I got anxiety and shit, and I'm an introvert, and I'm like kind of socially awkward unless I feel like I'm face to face, like face to face with somebody, I'm a little better. I can read stuff. I can go off of what you're doing. I might have, you know what I'm saying? But like, I'm not naturally a talkative person. I'm a good responder, 
So if you're asking questions, if you if you excited about something cool, I'll roll with you. But I'm not a good initiator of conversation. So like, trying to comment with the small talk, I'm just kind of just on the phone, quiet as hell, just. And I don't mean no harm. I just really don't have nothing to say. Like, I don't know what to talk about, especially. Oh, I hate these ones. Y'all ever have somebody? We just left each other. So like we went to the movies, we went to an event, we went to a party or something. We are, everybody said goodnight, we, we peaced out. And then they caught, yeah, man, what's going on? Look, we just talked, we just saw each other. So Oof. now we, we, done, we done caught up. You saw what I was just doing. It's literally nothing for us to talk about. Like, you can't even ask me what I was doing today. You was just with me. We, 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 yeah. Think about what you did and then, and then replace me with you. I don't know where to go with them. Or you're on the way to my crib and you're calling me to, to talk to me. Why are you talking to me on the way to the, we gonna talk when you get here. What is the phone necessary for? Did you want to sit in silence when you got over here? And that's why we talking now. Because um, that's what's gonna happen if we have nothing to talk about. Like, oh, yeah, my thing is, I, I, I hate when people call you for you to try to start the conversation. Motherfucker, I ain't had nothing to talk about. That's why I ain't calling. No, I, nope. I was in here quiet as hell until you called me. Yeah, what well, do you that, want to talk about? Hey, you, you call. You feel me? The call is initiated by the person, by the person who has a purpose in the call. If you don't have a purpose in the call, don't initiate said call. Please don't, because that's a waste of said call. Save that call energy for someone who is oh, yeah. lucky enough to get that call. You feel me? Like, save that for those people. The, the, I mean, it, 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 the, the thought was good. The thought is welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. But don't do it. Just don't. Just don't. Please don't. It, 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 you can text it. And, and, and this is my thing. Text it. I understand why people don't like to text because people read as they think people are trying to say it instead of just reading it for the what it is. I understand that. But that important is that. To get lost in translations, then you call. That means it's something exactly. It, it must be exactly. an important message. Common exactly. everyday mundane conversation don't get misconstrued because we either joking or it's just general, hey, what's up? Yeah, you good, right on. Like it, it ain't a whole lot there anyway. I can't I can't read what's up. I'm like, oh, this nigga, this nigga fucking with me. So what's up? How you doing? I can't read that like that. So Okay. Then you can't stick to text. Email is is other forms of communication. Oh, something, something. I don't call my mm-hmm. smoke signals. Send me, send me a carrier pigeon at them. Hey, beat on the drum. Don't send him whatever. Don't send him a carrier pigeon. He's gonna shoot it. He's gonna shoot the yes, pigeon. I will. Yes, yeah, I will. Like bird. Oh, yes, oh, sad. Sad note. I was, I was about to go to sleep last night and I heard some weird shit towards the back of my house. I was like, what the fuck is this weird noise? I was like, it's an animal or something on my house? So I looked out the back door, like in the laundry room. I, I don't even use it. I've never even used that door. And I've been in this house for like seven years. <laughs> I looked out the window, down my back stairs, there's two cats fighting their motherfucking asses off on my back porch. Like they okay, locked fight. up. Yeah, they, yeah, they must be fighting the ass off. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my dog. <laughs> now, my dog in the house with me. I'm looking at him. He looking at me like shit. You hear that shit? I ain't going out there. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, like man. I, I was like, I was like, all right, I'm gonna go lay in the bed, man. I ain't fuck with these cats. But I, I could still hear them from the bed. From all the way in the back of the house because they that damn loud. I was like, shit, I can't steal this shit. I go look again, they still there. So I go get the BB gun <laughs> and the dog. I was like, now we're gonna go outside, nigga. We can go on the porch to see what's going on. We open the door, them niggas run. I'm like, I right, bet. So as soon as I put him back in the cage, now he got to go piss and shit. He goes around the front of the house. Now he now he Mr. Scary, because he can't see where the cats to win. This motherfucker every day. Well, we hear the cats in the woods, but we I shoot one of them, but he don't sound like he a small cat. He sound like he a big cat, like one of them mountain cats or some shit like that. So I was like, okay, let's go ahead and piss and shit and get back to the fucking houses. 
I ain't dealing with shit out here in the dark because I ain't got oh. so many lights, motherfuckers. Niggas. Got yeah. up this morning, went to the backyard. I seen cat fur everywhere in the goddamn yard. Like these motherfuckers was really tussling out this. <laughs> but that's my side. I seen cat fur everywhere. <laughs> 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 You had like two jaguars in the back. <laughs> Yo, it's a black and white, it's a black and white cat, and a motherfucker look like a feral cat. The motherfucker was going just on the back, like my back stairs, just because yeah, I got a two tier back steps. The motherfucker was going at the back there. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And I was sitting there looking at him because, of course, I was high as shit. So I'm looking at the motherfuckers for like a good five minutes and on the porch fighting. I'm like, y'all yeah, motherfuckers, just don't, as long as you don't come up the stairs, you good. So it kept getting cat. loud. So I was like, now nah, I got to try to shoot y'all. I was like, to shut y'all up. Bobcats. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yet. It is Bobcats out here. I wouldn't be surprised. With Bobcat and a uh, fat ass regular house cat uh, or, or regular, whatever. Can't say alley cats because they know alleys out this bitch. So, wood cat. Yeah, wood cat. But out there, you're like, no, that's a nigga cat out there. That ain't one of them. Uh, Domesticated suburban. That cat, that's, that's, that's top cat. Yeah. That's, yeah. We clips. It, 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 it be shit out here because the motherfucker going hunting. I say you got hunting dogs. Like niggas be having like six hunting dogs. Well, if all the hunting dogs don't come back, whatever mm-hmm. one didn't come back, they just, they just leave that motherfucker. You know? <laughs> it's wood dogs to be up here. Now they now they just loose dogs. <laughs> yeah, country life. Shoot them. Oh, I, yeah, it's an off-camera conversation. My last against the grain is uh, I just hate that we have to be gentle to be socially acceptable. Uh, we should be able to say things however we want to as long as there's no disrespectful language or intent. I'm tired of being nice. I just want to be real. Being and nice is I getting guess. frustrating. Yeah, man, it's socially acceptable shit, man. It's getting on my damn nerves. Some shit just need to be called what it is, and, and, and that's that. Damn it, shit. That, damn it, I don't mean no harm, but that's what it is. I'm like, trying to keep naming shit, new shit every week, and learning new stuff, yeah. learning new terms. I can't like, keep up. All this shit. I can't mm-hmm. keep up. Then I refuse to try. Some people just got to put on their big boy or big girl britches and uh, stop being so goddamn sensitive. Or if you're going to be sensitive, be able to at least, you know, understand that, like, that's life. Everybody ain't gonna agree with it. Deal with it. Please, people, <clears throat> understand this one fact, which is true in all cultures. Your personal feelings are yours to care about and only yours to care about. At the end of the day, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of reality don't give a fuck about your personal feelings. But we're made to care nowadays. Don't give a fuck about your feelings. Don't give, give two a fuck shit. about your feelings. And it I used am to be in my mind. Point nine, 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 nine of reality. <clears throat> like, don't nobody give two shits about your feelings. Or oh, man, nobody. Else. It's all about respect. As long as I'm respecting you, respect me. That's about it, man. I don't yeah. give a fuck about your feelings, man. Some hurt your feelings. That's up to you because I don't know where your where your boundaries lie, and it ain't up to me to dictate or find out where your boundaries lie because I'm not that emotionally connected to you or indebted to you. So fuck it. At the end of the day, tuck your emotions in. Then your mama teach you start wearing your emotions on your fucking sleeve. Yeah, fuck your emotions should be like curtail. Your emotions should be like shirt tails. Tuck the motherfuckers in, man. Shit. That make your drawers bunch up. <laughs> now, if you get them Hanes Jones, the uh, the non bunchy ones, you feel me? Like the shirts that don't crunch them up. You tuck them shits in, they just stay in place. Oh, Is that what they call on the package? The non bunchy? I gotta look for the non bunchy. Non bunchy Hanes. <laughs> I oh, forgot what the name of them shit called. Uh, uh, I know Michael Jordan put them in the commercial for them shit when they first came out. I'm going to get some. Send me a box of product. Um, so I guess my against grace. Um, I really didn't have too much time to prepare for the against the grains, but here's a few things to get on my goddamn nerves. 
Um, there we go. <laughs> first of all, as Tiz would say, I really don't think I have to be socially acceptable. I think at a certain age, you shouldn't even care. I think at the thirty, you, I, I really, I don't, I don't think you should even care past thirty. I think past right. thirty, you just thug. I don't care. Just, right. think, just think about oh, how old people act. Old people do not care about shit, even shit they should care about. <laughs> man, at a certain point, man, whatever's gonna happen, mm-hmm. happen. What would be? Mm-hmm. Other yeah. thing. Other thing. Just because someone says you're pretty, you might still be ugly to me. <laughs> ugly as hell. <laughs> it might be just one thing. You might have a double chin. It, it might be something. I don't know. But for some of your personality or whatever, you might be fine to me. It's still it's ugly as shit. Or you can't dress. Yeah. And it's horrible to see a woman really that's fine as hell that can't dress. There's been plenty, plenty in my in my heyday of girls or females or women, you whatever you want to dictate the man is that people say, Oh man, she fast, but nah, you don't see her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> like shit like that is important to me. Like what well, like you got to smile at me. I don't I, mm, shit. Other thing. Uh, um just because I have known you in the past. You ain't my friend. I don't know you. We don't talk on a normal basis or whatever. You, shit. I don't even know your Facebook. I don't even care to know your Facebook. But, Remember we was at the we, thing? We went to the same thing together. Remember we was at the thing together? The thing with each other? Uh, yeah. and, and you know. Look, man. Let me be honest with y'all, man. I smoke weed. It helps my anxiety. And also, I don't have a good memory. I do have a good memory of stuff that I really want to and remember, talk on a regular but day. a lot of stuff I don't, I don't even care about. Fuck about your feelings. In your memory. In your memory. Um, and this is my last thing of random stuff that gets on my nerves or whatever. Um, I think I, I, if you want to augment your body, augment your body. I don't care. It's your body. It's your choice. But leave your face alone because y'all be Y'all be doing these Botox and messing with your face, and all y'all have the same face. There's a lot of Instagram women out there with the same exact damn face. It looked like I a agree. modified <laughs> Kim Kardashian. And a, uh, blow up dolls <clears throat> around that look exactly like with the same the lips, same. eyebrows, yeah. same makeup, same dress. And like same this. squinty eyes, same yeah. narrow Howdy ass nose. Ass Face or whatever. And they went and to the closet and pressed default. And then you got the, the bimbo ones that look yeah, like the bimbo yeah. five version of that. Uh-huh. It's like a calm version. It's like a Kim Kardashian version. And then there's like the like cartoonified bimbo version of that. Or whatever. The but they all end up six. when I buy something. I want something personalized. I want something that represents me or whatever. It ain't going to have me looking like somebody else. How y'all with your face, something that's supposed to be distinctive so people can un- like figure out you from the next motherfucker. Y'all all look the fucking same. It's like a female Goonies from the Popeyes. From, you know, Popeyes that's when they had the Goonies point. with the same face and shit. That's the point. That's the age of I can look like what I want to look like. So if they find somebody they want to look like, guess what? They can mimic everything down to the bone structure that they want to nowadays and look exactly yeah. what they want. Like. It's, it's, it's people out here with cosmetic surgery to make them look like Barbie dolls. Yeah. Oh yeah, you matter of fact, like, it, shit like it's a bonus. I, it, mm. It's a bonus fuckery for you, man. There's a it's some dude in Brit Britain, and like I'm gonna look it up. I add it up to the next fuckery or whatever. But this dude is trying to be transracial. He's trying to he's turning from a Caucasian man in England to his favorite K-pop. Korean singer and he's doing the plastic surgery to look exactly like him and it even it, and he just got backlash because he said he's going to get penis reduction so he can have an authentic Korean penis 
That's a bonus fuckery for y'all. That's how weird it yeah. is out here in these streets. You <clears throat> know, like uh, I, I said like this before he came out with his transracial shit. I brought it to the podcast first. Before I brought that transracial shit to the podcast, um, Childish Gambino brought it to his show Atlanta first. Transracial shit. I don't know if you watched the episode or if you haven't seen the show with the black guy um, with the blonde wig and the glasses. Talking about he was a white guy, a 40 year old white guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I like, didn't want to even think. Remember on um, Rachel? Hmm. Remember uh, Rachel Dollars, what her name is? You know, oh, yeah, Dollar Rachel Ball. Dollars All or whatever, that she was playing mm-hmm. like she was black and she was really white with a tan. Like, it was in charge of the NAACP. I don't know what's going she on. Cool, I don't know what's going on with the world. I just want the world to realize they going fucking crazy. You feel me? Like, shit. We even want to fucking fall sometimes. Just chill the fuck out. All this extra weird shit I needed, man. I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, I'm not sorry for saying it's weird because it's weird to fucking me, and that's my opinion. If you like it, cool. This could be the best thing in the world to you. Cool. So I ain't offending you. If you are offended by my comments, oh well. Stop wearing your feelings in your fucking sleeve. Shit is weird out here these days, man. And it's only getting weirder. I hate it. Boy, I, I'm going to love to, but I'm going to hate to at the same time see what the world looking like in like another 45 years. There's going to be some crazy shit out here, man. Mm-hmm. I'm going to love to see it because I'm, uh, hopefully God allows me to be alive to see it. But I'm going to hate to see it because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be reminiscing like, why shit can't be like this? Why I, I know, but shit is weird now. It's going to be weirder, man. It is weird. I ain't gonna even front you. Ain't lying. Real weird. A lot of it's the world of weirdos, and I'm weird. Long go, I, long I go fall. If I'm calling this weird, it weird is definitely some unusual things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm I ain't, I ain't that uh, normal. My goddamn self, but <laughs> yeah, bruh, it getting crazy out y'all. But man, um, what ain't crazy is I definitely think it's about that time for, you know, I think we can end on that note of craziness. Um, so uh, to recap, vote on the top MCs. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Fuck you, Putin. Mm-hmm. Fucking He's still wilding. He's Putin. wilding as we speak. If you hold, don't dry. Get rid of fake hair on your face and your head. Yes, Lord. Stop being socially acceptable. There's a whole bunch of shit that Peck just is about sick and tired of. So if all hearts and minds are clear, mm-hmm. we go all ahead right. and give y'all this week's Black Business of the Week, baby. Doors of the church are open. Six in the book. Um, this week's Black Business of the Week is, again, Be Beautifully True presents the artist Sean Ray's Art Park Showcase. That's on March 4th through 5th uh, in Douglasville, Georgia at 6719 East Strickland Street. They're going to have food, games, activities, giveaways, music. You can shop while you're there. They also have a boutique so you can actually buy clothes, uh, you know, jewelry, all kinds of cool stuff. They're going to have uh, stuff out there for the kids. So uh, stop by. It's going to be, uh, what is it, 5 o'clock to 7, to, no, 12 to 7, 12 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. on March 4th and March 5th um, at 6719 East Strickland Street in Douglasville, Georgia. That's the Be Beautifully True presents the artist Sean Ray's Art Park Showcase. And uh, you can find out more about them and this event at BeBeautifullyTrue.com. It's spelled exactly the way those words are correctly spelled. And then... Um, you can also find them at Be Beautifully True on Instagram. So yeah, that's our Black Biz of the week. And you know, yes, the, the best Black business of all that you can support is the partners, man. You want to financially support us, feel free to do so. You can become a monthly supporter on anchor.fm. Um, 
if you want to listen to our podcast there, you can definitely support for $4.99 a month there. You can also support um, at buymeacoffee.com for $4.99 a month. You can become a member and you can get exclusive uh, VIP perks that nobody else gets, um, exclusive shows, exclusive behind the scenes episodes, all kinds of cool stuff that nobody else gets access to. And then you also um, can donate for as little as a dollar on buymeacoffee.com. And as always, you can also go to our cash app and hit us up dollar sign partner tiz one that's dollar sign p-o-d-n-a-t-i-z one and uh you can always donate there as well um another way you can support us is by supporting one of the coolest black businesses in the world face tell them what that business is well of course as usual it's artreclothing.com that's a-r-t-r-e clothing.com a-r-t-r-e c-l-o T-H-I-N-G dot com. Our Trey Clothing. Come check us out. It's the official only place where you can get all partners merchandise and apparel. Come check us out. It's the only place you can get anything Our Trey. Come check us out, man. A-C-A-3. All day. Our Trey Clothing dot com. Indeed, man. And after you finish getting your partners merch and your Our Trey uh, AC-83 merch, please, 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 I, get, drop us a line. Shoot us a picture. Show us what you got on. Talk to us. You got some stuff you wanted to say during the podcast and you really wanted to explore it further, hit us up. Um, you wanted to give us some topics that you think we should cover. Hit us up. Pat, how can the people stay in touch with the podcast? How can they get in touch with us outside of the podcast? Let them know the ways they can do that. At sign, T-H-E-P-O-D-N-E-S. That's at T-H-E-P-O-D-N-E-S. That's TikTok, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's uh, Facebook. Our Facebook is Tis Face Pat are the partners. And uh, yep, you can DM us, you can comment on whatever post we have. Um, if you have any ideas that you want us to send to us, go ahead and you can DM us there too. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And if you can't remember all of that shit that we just said, just go to thepodnas.com, T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S.com, and you can get access to all of those things and more. And, man, it's been a pleasure. We have been the partner. And this has been our 66th episode, you motherfuckers. So, indeed, man, thank y'all for coming to kick it with us. Thank y'all for joining the conversation. Please make sure you leave us a voice message at anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners or on Spotify. Um, we can actually add those to the show and we get a chance to hear from you live and direct and it becomes a part of our show. So you can literally be part of the conversation. Um, yeah, man, we've been the partners. As always, I've been one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, and I've been along with. Other third of the partners, the Padawan with here and I'm along with. The final third was had a man is facing the place. Thank you for coming. Could have been anywhere, but you here with us. Yeah, motherfuckers. You been here with us. <laughs> Love y'all niggas, man. We'll see y'all next week. Be fucking with us and be fucking with y'all. Peace. <laughs> 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 my head are getting crazy. <laughs>